in a Catholic convent for 14 years. Entire school is right from the KG to my second PU, same school. Right? 14 years. In my 8th grade, I had a teacher, English teacher called Sebastian, Mr. Sebastian. He taught me a value almost six, three decades now. Alhamdulillah, till this day, I remember it and I practice it. Three decades gone. I don't even know where the teacher is. And I can, you know, visualize, I can run in my brain how he stood and how he spoke. It is imprinted in my memory. One teacher in a class, English teacher, he did not take all of senses. English teacher. During the course of some you know, subject, when you are talking about a particular lesson, he just taught me this. It, in fact, it taught everybody. But, but you know, it had a huge impact on me. Till this day, I remember. This is my personal experience. Then I want to share the experience of a brother. And the brother is here, Abdullah Bhai. Few years ago, I don't even know whether he remembers it. Few years ago, in a casual conversation, we were talking about sleeping. Right? You know, how quickly can we sleep? He said, I never had a problem sleeping by In five minutes I will sleep. I was like, how is it possible? He said, in my, during my school days, my teacher told me, whenever you want to sleep, you should sleep. I can not only sleep very fast, I can sleep for five minutes. Correct, right? Remember? Yes. Allah, and I don't know, he just said that I listened to it. But, you know, it runs in my mind. The teacher just said that, right? What subject uh, did the teacher take? I didn't ask you that, now I'm asking you. <laughs> there was a Kannada teacher. Kannada teacher. What has Kannada got to do with sleep? <laughs> Which grade was it by? 8th standard. Ah, look at the coincidence. I didn't ask him these questions then, right? It was just a part of the event, right? But you know, I don't know. You remember this combo? Yeah. You remember this combo? Few years ago, it's not like you know, last week, one year ago, maybe five, six years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah no, 2015, 2016. No? You can imagine. But it's still, it is there in my brain. You know why? The teacher, the Kanda teacher, tells something. Right? The IT professional was very successful, mashallah. After several years, he remembers that it has made an impact and he is sharing it with me. My dear sisters, this is the impact of the teacher. Please don't underestimate. This is the impact. The reason why I brought you this is because you, know, you might think I will be biased, right? Because I am presenting something, so it is very easy to say to play to the gallery and say my personal experience. That is why you, you did not know that I am going to talk about it today. Correct? You did not know. Right? But you didn't have expected me to remember this also. Correct? <laughs> because you know, I mean, you talk a lot. Right? Alhamdulillah, certain things, you know, you won't stick to your mind. And you can see the kind of impact it has had on him. That incident, the, the kind of impact it has had on me as a listener. So this, why? Because of one teacher. That was a Kannada teacher. So what does it tell you? Minus English, this teacher is Kannada. The subject that you teach doesn't matter. It does not mean that I can import values only when I teach Islamic studies. You can teach English, you can teach science, you can teach anything. So, you know, you don't, you know, there should not be an excuse, but I only teach science. How will I import science? I only teach geography. How will I import values? Whatever you teach, the kid does not differentiate Islamic studies teacher. This teacher is teaching me geography. This teacher is teaching me science. No! But the kid, you are the teacher. Right? So, whatever you teach, you can still impart values. And you can remember, several years later, I don't care about the English my English teacher taught me. And I'm sure that Abdullah Bhai you know, doesn't care about the Kara that the Kara teacher taught him. It is the value that the teacher taught us that remains. Correct, right? Because obviously, you know, the English teacher, 8th grade, you grow and you know, I mean, you learn a lot of other stuff. But the value, it stays lifelong. Right? So I think this should be good enough for you to understand the impact of a teacher. So never underestimate the role that you are playing. Now I want to tell you why you are blessed. Right? Now, now this is the actual slide. Right? That was just a feeler. You are blessed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with an opportunity to build the next generation. So this is not something, you know, that is very, very, that can be taken very lightly. A product manager can never be able to do this. I as an entrepreneur can never be able to do that. A businessman can never do this. But as teachers you can do that. And would you agree with me if I tell you the kids, the, all those kids that study here, right? In those kids, we have an Abu Bakr, we have a Umar, we have a Fatima, we have an Aisha, we have a Khadija. Will you agree or not? Yes, right? 
society, how he contributed. Same way with each and every Sahabi, Pray Lord Muhammad. We don't see that today, right? Why? It's the same kids. That is where the role of a teacher becomes very critical. Allah has blessed you with an opportunity to create Abu Bakr, to create someone like Umar, to create someone like Usman, to create someone like Ali, to create someone like Khadija, Khadija, Fatima, Aisha, Allah Salama. This is an opportunity that Allah has blessed you with. You know what it means? Every morning when you enter the class, right? You open the book to teach. The angels open the book to write the words for you. Subhanallah. Think about it. Which other profession can claim this? Think about it. You're doing a job. You enter the classroom, you open the book. Every time you do that, you can say Bismillah and you open the book to teach. Remember that the angels, they have also opened the book. For what? To write the words. No other profession can claim this. Isn't this a blessing? But this blessing alone you should thank Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seriously. Right? I'm sure that there are a lot of other professions where you can make more money. It's not wrong. Are you here because you did not find me any other profession to make money for you? No, I don't believe that. There are a lot of other things that you can do to make more money. But money is definitely not the criterion here. It's out of the window. There is something else other than money. It is satisfaction. Right? Apart from the personal satisfaction, you are also earning your asthma. You know why? You can earn everlasting rewards. One of the kids you train, it becomes like Bhagavata Vasudhi Gralila or it becomes like Aisha Gralila. Imagine how much they have contributed to the deen, how much they have contributed to the society and every time they do something good, who is getting rewarded? The person will get rewarded and several other people will get rewarded. But who is getting rewarded? You are also getting rewarded. Ah. Can a product manager claim that? I made a spreadsheet, alhamdulillah. Excellent product, successful. Our businessman claimed that I got this new product, introduced it into the market. Oh, it's a huge success. You won't get rewarded for that. And it is definitely not an everlasting reward. It's not only about the reward that you get when you teach, it is a lifelong reward, even after you die. Why? Because the value that my 8th grade English teacher taught me, I'm teaching my kids. Sorry? What value do you have? Ah, that, that I will not talk about because uh, deliberately I don't want to talk about it. But it is how you see the opposite gender. Right? You are entering in another that is a long story. He actually narrated a story. But it actually shaped our thinking of how, I, how we should look at the opposite gender. It's a long story. It will take five minutes. No time for that. But leave that. But the point is the impact here. Let's not get uh, distracted with that. Right? It's the impact that the teacher has got. So I am going to teach my kids when they grow up, about that. And I'm sure that you know, there are several things that we have learned we are going to teach our kids, inshallah. But the difference is, he was not a Muslim. Being a Christian, he was a very a practicing Catholic. Right? So there are certain values, right? The Catholics, they have. They have a lot of values. Especially the social values, they are very strong. He shared that. But we are one step above, right? As Muslims, it's not just about values. Values are meaningless if there is no Tawheed. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with Tawheed. So when you impart those values, that is when you really earn your Akhra. And it's an everlasting reward because it doesn't stop with that kid. That kid grows, it has got a huge impact in them. They teach it to their kids. SubhanAllah. And if, imagine if this kid becomes a teacher, like our mother Aisha Raleigh she was a teacher, right? She was a teacher. Alhamdulillah. If, she, if the kid becomes a teacher, and I say teacher, not necessarily a school teacher, it can be a professor, it can be anything. So imagine the impact they will create in the society. And who has been given that opportunity? You. And don't think this is random, huh? Everything happens with divine precision and divine will. When we believe in Kadhar, we believe that everything happens, right? Things don't happen randomly. The story that you know you shared about is fish. Almost six, seven years back, it 
here and then I do this, something like that. Same way as a Muslim, it is like brushing the teeth and taking bath. It is to pray five times, to recite Quran, to give some charity. This is the basics. That is not your legacy. Your legacy is what these people did. What is Islam? Same idea. But what is what to do with education? That's 
what that researcher Dr. Farah Muhammad, she says. You know why? We look at the ending of the hadith, the Prophet says, Hada Jibrilu, li wa'alimu nasatinam. This is Jibril, Jaha li wa'alimu nasatinam. He has come to teach you your being. So the entire hadith, the nukta, or the crux of the hadith, is education, is teaching. But we, know, we, we find very less discourse on this. That's why I really love that research paper, mashallah, may Allah reward her abundantly, mashallah. Right? So there are two things that we can learn. This is very important, important Abdullah by also will say. Okay? There are two things in education that we can learn. One is how you teach. It's called a pedagogy, a study of how you teach your students. This is for you. And this is for what you teach. This is for people who want to make a curriculum of syllabus. Right? Both are covered. Same hadith, huh? Inshallah you will see. The same hadith, you learn how to teach, you also learn what to teach. Okay? One is methodology, another is curriculum syllabus. How you teach? Let's take that. Okay, before I go into the slide, I want to ask you, who is in the hadith, right? Who is the teacher, who is the learner? Go ahead. The hadith, right? Who is the teacher? Who is the learner? Sahabas are learners. Okay. Now we will keep them aside. Then we have two important personalities in the hadith. One is Jibril and another is Salah Now tell me, who is the teacher? Who is the learner? Jibril is what? Teacher. Teacher. Right? You might be a PhD 
double PhD, doesn't matter. I am talking to a kindergarten kid, I go to that level. Correct? This is another learning. Number three, the personal connect with the students. If you look at the hadith, it's not all, like each and every detail is captured. Even when I saw he did not sit far away from the Prophet. What did he do? He went so close, his knee was touching the knee of the Prophet. So close. Normally, if somebody comes, right, nobody sits close with them, right? You will teach them, right? You will go and sit like that. No. You know why? It is not only figuratively, even physically, the proximity, the closeness should be there. And you know what? This is extremely important in today's time. You know why? If you go online on YouTube, you will find a lot of videos which explains concepts better than most of the teachers. Yes or no? Correct, right? For example, gravity. There is a beautiful video by NASA where they explain gravity. I actually you know, used it to teach my kids and they also did that exercise. But the point is, can the YouTube videos or the Khan Academy, can it ever replace you teachers? No. Why? Because of this. That will impart knowledge, but the personal connect is absolutely missing. When there is no personal connect, the education will not touch the heart. It will touch the brain. And that is what is happening, right? Today we are catering to the brain. What about the heart? Heart is dead. But you know, we are you know, filling it with knowledge. It's not a container to be filled with that. Right? The brain is not a container, but that's how we approach, right? You know, fill everybody, at all level, not only kids. Even adults are like that. How much I have memorized? How much I have done this? What is your understanding? What has it changed in your life? Nothing. I'm saying, yesterday I'm saying today. But I have learned three hadith more, no, ten I have more. No, you are killing it like a container, useless. This personal connect will avoid that. Because when you talk, you are not talking to their ears, you are talking to their hearts. This is something that we learn from the hadith. Number four, interaction with mutual respect. Okay? Okay, you know, mutual respect, right? Jibreel alayhi salam, he gave all the respect due to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam treated Jibreel alayhi salam with all that respect. And the Sahaba did not know, right? It was Jibreel alayhi salam, they did not know. They are thinking that somebody has come and they are like amazed. This person is asking questions, he is also saying you are correct. <laughs> like, how is that? But you can see the mutual respect. This is something a very big learning. The kid might be very small, it doesn't know anything. But as a teacher, what, what do we see traditionally? Teacher, hierarchy, right? Teacher, student is here. No. You put them at the same level. Two and a half mindset, you are already there. Teach them with mutual respect. How? Look at the wisdom in this study. Right? Next is what you teach. This is a curriculum. Okay? The man, human being, is different from animals, right? Because of certain components. Why? The man has got, you and me has got the mind, the body and the soul. Correct? Right? If you actually carefully look at the hadith, the hadith has got several dimensions. If you actually look at the hadith, the iman is for the mind. Iman is for the mind. Body, Islam. Soul is Islam. Okay? Now, using this concept, how do we build a curriculum? How do you build a curriculum or how do I approach my subject? I have science. It's already there. Books are already made. Right? You are going to write a new book now. Inshallah, maybe Abdul Abba will write. I don't know. Right? But, but, but for now, we will use the book that we have. Right? I am making science book. Using this concept, I am going to look at science book and I am going to change the way I am teaching. Right? How I am making it, right? how I am seeing science subject will change. Right? Now let's see. Looking at the mind, you teach the world view. I am going to explain this, don't worry, right? You teach the world view. How you see the world? You teach the kid how to see the world around you. Okay? For Islam, you teach actions. I have a world view, 
don't ask people. Take a survey. Do you think Islam is the best religion? Just be like, but this asking this question only will not hit you. Right? Why? Ideology is there in the brain. In action, it is completely absent. Correct or not? So it's not just about having the world view. It's about actions as well. Last but not the least, soul. This is very important. These two cannot happen unless the soul is purified and it is in a journey of excellence. And by the way, this is not only for kids, huh? it is for us also. Right? So this is what it is, right? Is this clear? Then I'll explain each and each uh, section separately, inshallah. Now let's look at mind, right? Iman, worldview. One of the things that Allah Abu Alaikum has done is in each of us, including the pigs, Allah has planted the seed which we call a sutra. Right? So all we have to do is we have to nurture the seed and make it grow. The seed is already there. Everybody, right? every human being, not as Muslims. Allah has planted the seed. But how come we see tyrants today? How come we see murderers? How come we see people who call for open genocide? They have the same putra, right? What is the problem? The problem is this seed of putra was not nurtured. When you plant a seed, right? You just leave it like a water. It will die. You have to pour water, you have to add fertilizer, right? You have to put it in sunlight. You have to do all that. And who is going to do this? You. You have to nurture it. Right? You are teaching science. Doesn't matter. You teach Kana, you teach Arabic. Doesn't matter. You will still make efforts to nurture that sutra. So how do you do it? Teach them how to see things around them and connect them to the Allah. Very important. Everything around us, it actually remains as about Allah. Yes or no? The fingers. Do they remain about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. The breath that we take, right? How easily we take. Go and ask the patients who suffered from COVID. Oxygen cylinders are in huge demand, right? Why? Oxygen was there outside, right? It's not like we ran out of oxygen. Oxygen was there outside plenty. Why did it struggle? Something inside did not work. Today, how easily we breathe in and we breathe out. Are we conscious about it? This is, I'm just giving an example. This is something you teach the kid. To teach this, you need not be teaching Islamic studies. Right? Any subject, teach geography. You teach them about sea. You teach, right? What is an island? What is ocean? Indian ocean? What is ocean? You teach all that. It is a sign of Allah SWT. Geography. You see, teach mountains. Sign of Allah SWT. So whatever they see around. You have to train their mind to link it with Allah. This is very important. Right? To give an example, Al Khalik. Al Khalik is one of the attributes and names of Allah. So link every creation to Allah. Every creation, human being, right, animals, every creation to Allah. Not just that, link every creative action. Do animals are they creative like this? Monkeys, chimpanzees. Will they write poem? Will they draw? Will they paint? Will they make decorations like this? Why? Because Allah has not given them that ability. Where is this ability coming from? Where is it coming? It is coming from Allah. He has given that ability for us to create, to write poems, to paint. Right? The creativity, right? Whatever we call as creativity, art. It comes from al -Khali. So every time they do this, right? What we normally do, we have to appreciate the kid. Mashallah, very nice. Right? If the painting is really nice, you put it in WhatsApp status. What we have to do here, what are we learning here? You go and tell the kid, Mashallah, great job. But you know where this is coming from? Where is it coming from? It's coming from al -Khali. So every time the creative child, the creative genius comes out, what does the child remember? It remembers? Lost. This is just an example. Similarly, in a moment for, you know, just take the names of Allah Subhanahu A Shakur, right, a Wahhab, right, so on and so forth, right, you think and you can link in each and everything. By the way, this is not only for teaching, it is 
for us also. If we don't practice right, you cannot teach. Trust me. It will not work. Even if it comes in our doctor, we are not. Unless we do this, we cannot teach. So we should first, inshallah, start seeing things around us and we should connect it with Allah SWT. This is very important. Next is body is not actions. Now to help them translate this world view, right? The world view is common. Because they are connecting everything with Allah SWT. That is very important, right? Because today they teach science, physics, chemistry, biology, not a single word for God. Yes or no? Okay, saying Allah. They don't even say God. That is a completely remote. Any subject you take, history, geography, the word God itself is not there in the syllabus. Completely gone. It's replaced by nature. Replaced by nature, right? That's a very sad thing. The child is not outside you are saying, you say Quran, you pray. But the education is programming your mind to remove all of the Allah from the world view. What change will you bring in the society? You do not bring anything. That is why people are like me. Seriously. Right? Why? Because you know, 14 years I have been taught. College I have been taught. But that link between whatever I am learning and Allah what I am is completely absent. Now, dichotomy. This is separate, this is separate. It doesn't work like that. Islam is not like that. Everything we do is an act of Ikhada. Everything I do, it is linked to Allah SWT. I move in my hand, it is because of Allah's mercy. That is what I am supposed to believe. That is what we are supposed to believe. That link should happen. That connection should be made. That cannot happen on its own. You have to build that connection. So when you build that connection, what happens? It should translate into actions, right? It's not about me sitting and saying, Alhamdulillah. Part of the action. This is what you will do next. For example, talk about uh, al khalik right? Creations. One of the things that you can help them understand is this environment is an amana. It's an amana, amana. Can you go on the door of cutting trees? No. Allah Rabbul Alameen has given all this so that we preserve it. We take care of it. We protect it. It's a responsibility. It's a zimbabari. Today, can you name one living environmentalist, Muslim environmentalist? One. No. What are you doing? Because nobody taught them this. Everybody wants to become an engineer. I don't know why. Maybe to increase inflation. Right? I mean, seriously. Not a single Muslim environmentalist. The people who are against this, they are speaking about it. Our people. Why they are busy? This is a fundamental responsibility for you and me. You teach the kid. This is an amana. So you preserve environment. The kid itself will go and start planting trees. You see? Yes or no? This is what Baba is doing. Is brought. I mean, these are examples. Huh? Taking a calling and then making these kids understand Allah created. Why? For us. Right? If somebody gives you something, what do you want to preserve? Right? Give a gift to preserve. This is a gift from Allah SWT. So this is an amana, we preserve it. We have to do everything to protect it. Will the kid ever forget it? No. The kid will grow up with that mindset. No. Next is, ways to show gratitude. We teach charity. But do we teach that giving charity is a form of gratitude to Allah SWT? Are we the only people uh, who, who give charity? People of other faiths also give charity. Yet this give charity. You tell us they donate more than some of the Muslims. What is missing? It is not about giving money. It is about why you give that money. So this connection should be made. You want to thank Allah SWT. You give even one rupee to teach the kid. You give one rupee to someone. You are actually, what are you doing? You are not just giving charity. You are thanking Allah SWT for the blessings that he gave you. Now, oh, you know, you make the connection, right? Now, there is a world view that Allah gives me. Now, oh, I am doing it in action and I am connecting it with that world view. Imagine if the child is taught like this. These are examples, right? Are these the only thing? No. There are several things. The child is brought up in this nurturing. Imagine what kind of business they will do. And imagine how much of rewards you will get. Aren't you blessed that Allah has given you this opportunity? Yes or no? Yes. She said, Alhamdulillah. My dear sister, this is not, no. Cannot be taken lightly. This is such a huge honor. Wallahi, I'm sorry, Allah. Wallahi is a huge honor that Allah has given you this opportunity. 
to build a generation of Muslims that will go and change the society. Be in that. Right? So last but not the least, soul and sound purification. The previous two will fail, even if in adults. This is not there. Right? We, know, we have no shortage of knowledge. We have a lot of knowledge. Yes or no? You take a nap. You take all the hadith, the fasir, everything like this. But why is it not changing? Because of this problem. The soul is corrupt. So unless the soul is purified, the world view on actions will never happen. So what are we supposed to do? You build a character. Right? I want to explain this. You teach the child how to control the nerves. In a child, you will see anger, yes or no? Very common. You see lying, yes or no? Pride, you will see. I'll give an example. A child gets something, new pencil box, and go and show around everybody. What is this? Show off, pride. If that is not addressed, sisters, please focus here. If that is not addressed, the child, when it grows up, it will grow like the many mistakes that we see. Show off. This should be addressed. Who can know? Parents do not know. You are spending enough quality time in the kids. So you should notice. You notice the kid doing this, you have an opportunity to teach the kid, to nurture the kid and tell her no. That's not right? Because there will be one kid who will not have a new pencil box. The father may have come from Qatar, he would have got a new pencil box, right? And the other parent power is somewhere here. So you don't have a pencil box. This kid can go and shows this to everybody. Do you see that in the kids or no? Yes, this should be addressed. Jealousy, I need not tell you. Kids are very jealous. And you see, all the kids are different. One kid will show anger, another kid will have pride, another kid will have jealousy. Each kid is different, right? But we have these problems. So what am I trying to tell you? Even as a kid, we exhibit all this. If only my teacher had identified where the weakness is and he had nurtured me, probably I would not be like this. Right? This is very important. Stinginess. You will not share anything. You see that you can get? You do not give anything to anybody. Right? <laughs> this is the problem. If you let the kid develop, like, what is the point in memorizing ayat of the Quran if you do not address this? You do not address this. Is there any, any use? You do not give anything. You do not give money. You do not give time. You do not give any sacrifice. Nothing. At least you recite Quran. What is the use? This is important. And who can do that? You can do that. You teach the game. No. Allah has given you this boy. Again, lead to that action. Right? And tell her. And you keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Teaching it. Teaching it. Teaching The kid will understand. The kids are, mashallah, they are not stubborn like adults. Adults, they are stubborn. You come and tell you, you will understand. I will still do this. Kids are alhamdulillah, they are not like that. You make them understand, they change. Right? That's why you know the kids are like clay. You can mold them the way you want. You see the pursuit of excellence. Whatever you do, you do it the best. That's what you should teach us. Whatever you do, doesn't matter. Right? This one doesn't matter. But you give your best. You do take one go, kick. That should be your best kick. You write A, that should be your best A. So this is the attitude that you teach them. Right? You, you know, you place this, uh, the stick this ribbon. Stick it in the best manner. You teach the kid, you teach the kid. So everything that the kid does, he tries to do it in the best manner. What is the This is the Islam method. Which unfortunately is missing in a lot of our Muslims. Prayer, no attempt to make it the best. Vidya, no attempt to make it the best. Charity, no, nothing, nothing best. Everything will be tick mark only. Ah, I pray like this. Did you make an effort to make the prayer the best that is possible? No. Why? Because it was not imprinted in our brain. But you can teach that. Everything you do, that is everything. Sharpening the pencil, try to do it the best manner. The, the you know, pencil link should be very sharp. This is a mindset, right? Yes or no? Yes. You teach that, I can tell that from experience. My kids are like that, because I told them that. When I told her, yesterday you pointed out in the BBD, he said, Dad, you only told me you should be perfect. Right? Now you are saying, you know, let's move on to the next level. He said, no. You will be able to take it 10 minutes and sit and finish it. Right? You didn't agree. What I am trying to tell you, skits are like that. You teach them, they catch that. Right? So, instead of the pursuit of excellence. Give them 
the mindset to always improve and grow. This is very important. We all learn till we die. We learn. So this is the mindset. No matter where you are, in Salah, you always have things to learn. Don't think I know. No, you don't. Trust me, we can have a discussion on Salah. I will tell you, and you will be like, you know, what it is. So, I will no, you don't. Trust me, because I know. There are a lot of things that we are learning every day. This is the mindset. And this is the mindset of a Muslim. That is why the great scholars, right, like Imam Malik, when people ask them, they gave him a lot of questions. They gave him far away. You know what he answered? For majority of the questions, he said, Mahadi, Mahadi. He said, I don't know, I don't know. So they asked him, you come all the way from there, you are saying, I don't know. What will you tell the people? People have sent them, right, to go and find answers. He said, go tell the people that Imam Malik doesn't know. So this is the attitude of the scholar. Nobody can say that I know everything. So this is the mindset that we have to instill in the kid. Right? I always want to improve. I always want to grow. The world view, the actions, purification and excellence. It all comes together nicely from the Hadith of Jibreel al -Islam. If you can do this consciously, imagine the outcome. What will be the outcome? What kind of kids will they pass out as? Show me one school, international school that can replicate this. It's a challenge. Any international school. They may have the best teachers, you know, who, are, who have studied abroad, who have got PhDs in all this, you know, academics. Can they replicate this? Only a Muslim can do this. This is a tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the people that will go and change the society. This, if you try, inshallah, you will really see Abu Bakr coming out. You will really see Umar coming out. You will really see Fatima coming out. You will really see Aisha coming out. May Allah be pleased to come out. Yes or no? Does everybody agree? Does anybody who is there to say that no, I did not No, right?